Hello and welcome to this video on tips when using the measures graph in the Race Studio Analysis software. Now in previous videos in this tutorial series we've looked at how to be able to decide what channels you want to be able to view, whether you want to look at the data overlaid on Google uh, Earth, all sorts of information that's been available. But this video is really designed to be able to look at some tips and tricks on how to enhance your experience when using the measures graph, which is predominantly the main screen that most people use when they analyze data. So the first thing I want to be able to have a look at is how do I actually increase the space uh, on the screen for the graphs? And that's as simple as hitting the space bar. So if I'm in the Race Studio Analysis software, I can actually hit the space bar and what that's going to do is it's going to get rid of the measures graph, uh, sorry, the measures bar on the left hand side that takes into account all of your channels and your laps and your user profiles. It just increases the space of the screen should you be using a laptop uh, or a small screen. If you ever wanted to be able to get that back, you can also just click on the space bar again and it will actually bring that information back for you. So a great way of being able to just increase the amount of, uh, of, of um, viewing that you have of the graph. Now the next thing uh, is to be able to say the next tip is to look at how do I adjust the uh, scale on the graphs should something like this happen. And many of you may have experienced where uh, the graph isn't completely viewable within the actual box um, or the tile uh, in Ray Studio Analysis. Now what's happening here is just the scale is a little bit smaller than the um, variable on it. So here the max speed is 117 whereas here it tops out at 110. Now you have lots of options to change this. Uh, the most um, you know, used one sometimes is to right click in the actual uh, measure itself and change the plot settings. But that's a few more clicks than um, one of the other ways of doing it is just to hover over the actual um, scale itself. And when it turns into a little hand, just double click and that will actually automatically rescale for you so that you can actually see the data um, as it should be on the actual graph. So a very easy way of being able to just adjust should some of the variables not quite be right uh, on the screen in front of you. Now the next thing to be able to have a look at is what if I wanted to be able to look at this data with a different color background? Uh, I might prefer that. I might uh, find it easier to be able to see the data in different lighted conditions or different screen conditions. So you can actually do that up here by clicking on options and going into plot settings. Here you have the option of being able to say um, I can change all sorts of information which will be user preference and you can just change those um, as you need to. But the easiest way to be able to change uh, in one big um, adjustment is to click here on the screen. It says right now it's set to set to default white based. If I click on black based and click on apply, now what that's going to do um, is it's going to change the view and the background of the graph so that the data is viewable on a black background instead of a white background. And so very useful if you want to be able to look at data this way. Again, a preference, um, but oftentimes you see that this data really shows up a lot clearer depending on the uh, choice that you've made. So that's one option. The next is to be able to say, how do I adjust the width of the actual graphs themselves so I can see the data um, in more uh, in greater accuracy or I can see it um, stand out more. So what I can actually do is I can click up on this settings button up here in the top right and here I've got the option of being able to change some variables and so um, what you can do is you can change the line width and so let's say for example I chose five instead of two and I click on apply and exit. Now what that's going to do is it's going to make the line wider and so now especially on this um, black background instead of white background, those charts really show up. And so again, another user preference variable, but again, very useful if you want to be able to demonstrate something, um, especially if you're projecting or showing this uh, to a large number of people. So again, a great feature. I'm going to change that back um, just for the purposes of today's demonstration and I click on apply and exit. And so the next thing we want to be able to have a look at is how do I actually get greater amounts of detail or how do I zoom in? And so you can do this in a number of ways. The first thing is you can pick anywhere on the graph that you want and you can say, okay, I'd like to zoom in there. And the first thing you can do is use the wheel on your mouse and scroll by pushing up um, or pulling backwards and that will actually increase the area that you're looking at. Now the advantage of this is if you've got a lot of detail, it allows you to be able to see those driver inputs in a little bit more detail so you can analyze a little bit further. 
But one of the other options you have is you can also use the up down arrows on your keyboard. But the best option is if you really want to be able to select a certain area is you can actually use this button here, which is called zoom. If I click here uh, and hold down the mouse here, I can zoom in on a certain area. So this is the first corner uh, at Silverstone National. And you can see in this instance, we can see a lot more detail. Now we're only using GPS uh, longitudinal information here, but even still, we can see that the red lap slows, um, whereas the blue lap doesn't slow as much. And as we've zoomed in on the detail, we can see with a scale at the bottom in terms of feet distance, when the red uh, lap started to close um, uh, and, and break sooner than the blue lap and what the impact that was overall on both time distance. And we can see that up here in terms of um, speed. So again, a great way. If you want to be able to zoom out, you can actually use the mouse and the keyboard again, or you can just use this great feature here, which just um, zooms back out to a one view, uh, a lap view, which is really, really um, useful if you want to reset and, and reanalyze again in a, in a different spot. Now, the last feature I'm going to show on this chart is going to be something called uh, the delta function. And this is really useful if you want to be able to understand the impact um, of one particular point on track and an action from a driver and get an understanding of what that one action had in relation to performance. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it and I'm going to pick an area on track where I want to be able to see um, the delta uh, between the two points. And so I'm actually going to pick uh, this point here, which is the braking for turn one and all the way to the braking for the second corner on this track. So if I hold down the mouse, you can see that this line shows um, uh, it's adjusting and then I can release. And so what that's going to do is it's actually going to give me some information now um, in relation to what the difference is between um, those two particular points. Now, at this point on the track, in terms of what's happening, you can see that from this point here where the red lap breaks and the blue lap breaks a little bit later and then that speed is carried all down the straightaway, you can see that that variable there, this section here, shows that that just one section within this delta analysis shows that it was a 0.3 loss in terms of time from the red lap to the blue lap. A huge amount of time being lost uh, in just one corner by analyzing that. And so the delta function allows you to be able to analyze between different points um, at any given um, location. Now you can do this for additional variables as well. And you can see different aspects of um, what was the difference in speed, what was the difference in, in um, RPMs if you had that, or any kind of setting. But uh, for the most part, this function is very useful down here um, with, the, um, with the time distance. So that's it for this video. Please give it a thumbs up if it was helpful to you. Please also leave a comment below if you want to let us know your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell icon to be notified of future videos. There's a lot more content to come. Thanks for watching.